I mean, should we should we sing hustling? Is that is that no, the typical? No, I shouldn't. No, you could. Well, I could have done that. Something like you know, something in that vein. My understanding. Oh, obviously. Uh, welcome to the second uh, PAX Online Q and A. Sorry, I couldn't be there with you. I'm still at the beach. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fine. As long as you got that that tender wi- that wireless fi. I do. Be, obviously, we should be able to succeed now. Um, my understanding is that you have shared with me a screen full of cues that that lurk in want of an A. Is that is that basically me, right? Do you see me tantalizing them even now? Well, yeah, I see you just brushing so gently. All right, gross. The realest one from the fakest place asks, "Can't fight love, so." FF, come. <laughs> what is? I don't understand. What does that say, Jerry? I I'm looking at it on your screen, and I think these are Hash, uh, hashtag coming in. Is that a young? Is that is that something the youths say? Yeah, I I could go get a youth. I think it's hashtag coming in, and it's cosmic, maybe. No. Um, oh well, no! I, now you say that, that's right. Yeah, but it's some kind of beast. I don't know. I don't know what young people are having sex with anymore. I mean, well, these are two birds. You see, from on my side, it looks like it might be an some arms that have been grafted somehow onto either a shiny pigeon or a seal. No, it's two big, two pigeons kissing, and the. Someone's added human arms, which goes against the very laws of God. Well, it's a continuing subversion of nature's design. Every day. Like fruit further from the light. All right, here yeah. we go. You got this. Indeed. Angus McDonald, longtime ally, uh, from right here in the PAX Online crowd asks, you accidentally signed the wrong document, and now they're making a live action Penny Arcade movie. It's time for casting, and they ask you for your wish list for Tycho and Gabe. Who are you putting down? I mean, you have it easy because you already know. Well, yeah, I mean, Sean Connery for Gabe. Yeah, Sean Connery for Gabe. I think it's Sean Connery for Gabe. And then on my side, we'll do Vin Diesel. That I'm one doesn't make go. any No, What's that doesn't make any identical. sense. It's identical. It's just like, I'm going to be too busy to do it. But you, know, you get if Vin they Diesel in there. If they didn't hate each other, it would be cool to get The Rock and Jason Statham. Oh, yeah, my understanding is that there are tensions between these gentlemen. Oh, and yeah. I read an article. Even uh, at the contractual level. I read an article about some of the biggest feuds on sets. Really? Yes. The number seven will shock you. <laughs> Were you shocked by number seven? No. It was fine. But it was interesting to see that they didn't get along. Apparently, they're both very much the, you know, I'm the strongest guy in the room type of guy. Yeah, yeah. But didn't you say that, like, there's a contractual obligation somewhere in there that like they have to like get hit or hit an equal number of times or something like that. Like they have to. Yeah. Like they want to make sure that they're the one who beats up the most bad guys and doesn't get hit as much. That is the most. Some we have, we have discussed this before. Some people have stupid dreams. <laughs> well, yeah, they do. Yeah. We've met a lot of people and we'll walk away and we'll be like, man, their dreams are so dumb. Yeah, Why do you yeah, want that? You need, to, you need to aim higher than the number of pretend villains dispatched. Skater Boy from that one song asks, have you ever dated someone who thought they were too good for you? That's going to have to be a Jerry question because I've dated exactly one person. Well, I mean, you dated exactly one person, but that's not to say that there weren't encounters. Previously. I've had in, sure, I had encounters, but like at a zoo. <laughs> You come, you yeah. come by between two and four. Yeah, exactly. They give you a sack of nuts. No, it's like we saw the red pandas. Um, <laughs> uh, no, if somebody thought they were too good for me, y- yes, yes. But I had three girlfriends at that time, so I mean, you had room. I, it just, it just saved me time at a certain yeah. point. There you go. Confounded Todd from Black Cauldron Forest asks, oh boy, hunger outweighs thought. 
Okay. Bioluminescent bug. Why does my butt glow? Again, uh, online as it is in the real world, the PAX Q&A. Oh, it's a poem, Jerry. I know that. It's a haiku. Yeah, I get it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying is that really it's an opportunity for others to build their personal brands. Yeah. You know, he's got some work out there now. Building that portfolio, I appreciate Yeah, exactly, exactly. The AI meme maker from the internet asks me, my friends. Yes. My friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is... It's, no, the AI meme maker is a real, is a real automated device. Huh. And this is what computers think of us, I think is what we're learning. Okay, here you go. Uh, Jeff Raven from the Pit Crew, by way of Club PA. Of course, thank you, Pit Crew. Board. Indeed. Uh, dear Gabe and Tycho, firstly, uh, thank you so much for continuing to stream and be active with your community. Um, in a world thrown into chouse, chouse, uh, chouse, uh, your content has been a bacon of light in an otherwise dark time. Uh, my question is, will we see Tycho take the helm and do a video game stream as in days of yore? Well, it was, very, it was much, much easier when uh, I could just have Josh, you know, make sure that the stream happened. I haven't developed the suite of skills uh, that Mike has for home the streaming. set of skills, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems like if I want to get a stream out there, uh, the only way to... The only way to make it happen is to investigate that um, that stuff here from home. And the truth is, is that I mean, I'm, I'm always playing some, I'm always playing some kind of indie horse shit. Um, yeah, exactly. I think that you could a lot of the stuff that you just tell me on the phone. I think you could get out of your system in a, easily in a, in a stream in a more productive way. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. All right, black envelope. Are you ready? I am. I'm prepared. I got it. Talit Axor uh, from Sydney, Australia. Uh, hello, of course. Uh, when my eldest son was born, I successfully campaigned for permission to dub him Gabriel. Uh, the next year, my best friend had his first child. I received an announcement via text that he had named the poor no. lad Tycho. No. 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 Uh, I passed this on to my family, and after some initial distaste, we began to appreciate it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ugh, bleh. Um, until about a week later, when we learned with barely concealed relief that his real name is Scott. And so I feel like there is a substantial gulf conceptually between Scott yeah. and Tycho. It's a, good, it's a good joke, though. Nobody got hurt, you know? Oh, man. Uh, my question, what is the hardest you have ever been trolled? Um, as an aside, the cosmic mirroring of our respective broods was restored a few years later God. when my second was named Elliot. Does your, I don't know if your son does this or not. They ever put the tape on the bottom of the mouse? Oh, my God. Dude, I mean, it's all the time. I, Noah thinks he's, you know a genius and I come in and I'm like, okay, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I guess I got to rebuild this computer. Yeah, exactly. Cause you go super far go down super that far. rabbit hole, right? Like immediately I'm, I'm as far down into this thing as I can go. You're up to your fucking elbow in it's it. It's plugged in. Yeah, exactly. No. And there's a light you lift and it up. And you're light. like, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's big. <laughs> no, dude. What I get is uh, my wallpaper. So now both children do it. My wallpaper changes, I mean, multiple times a day. It's like my wallpaper is the battleground for my two children. Yeah. Um, and it's like the last time he installed like Bonsai Buddy. Do you remember like the, like the old like Bonsai Buddy? Like no. this thing, it stopped. You'll have to look around line. It's a, it's a, it's like a ape of some kind. Um, but okay. they're always pasting it into the wallpaper in new places. I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like I don't need that in my life. I feel we like life we deserve better. I feel like life is hard enough as it is. Jeep from Grand Caravan asks, <laughs> sliced bread. What's better than it? 
What's better than it? What's better than it? <laughs> I, I feel strongly that um, sliced bread is in the middle somewhere in terms of like true quality assessments. Well, I mean, since its invention, yeah, I think it's been on a steady decline. Yeah, it's like, it, it, because I mean, when it hit the scene, it was like, oh shit, sliced bread. Wow, it's like, yeah. I just got this whole loaf. But I mean, you must not have gotten that saying until five years after maybe. Five years after something else comes out and they're like, that's as good as sliced bread. God, you know. <laughs> You know, and I guess it never occurred to me, like our, our primitive forebears, yeah. right? It had never occurred to me that, I mean, maybe when they got some bread out of a, like a bag and it was like sliced, they were like, shit. Like, yeah, I just don't I, don't, I never had that. I never had that part of the experience. Right? I don't like slicing bread. Do you? It's not my favorite. No. There you go. Uh, Gao from the magical land of Pridane asks, not a question, but a request. Mm -hmm. Please don't ever cease your exploits in motorsports and the management thereof. Uh, they are unexpected. They are an unexpected, but endless treat. And I look forward to the weekly routine of choosing the correct tires for Gabir Motors, obviously with the pretend hashtags from drivers that are not real. What do you mean pretend? They're real hashtags. The I mean, drivers I guess, aren't real. I guess the hashtags are real. Yeah. Um, but no, Motorsports Manager obviously is ridiculously, like it's more entertaining than I could ever have imagined. Why have we been able to play it for six months? We don't play anything for six months. No, we don't. And we certainly don't get better at it. No, no, no. And that's, that's, been, the, that's been the craziest part about it. So just so that everyone is completely aware, um, motorsports manager is basically, you can do other sports besides F1, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got endurance races, got GT. It's got yeah. all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah, so basically, you like end to end, like all the way down into the pit, you are managing every aspect of this sport. And even saying it out loud, it sounds like it might be dumb. But the fact that it has maintained our, our like rapt attention for, uh, you know, a half a year and, but not just our attention, like then the channel fills up with people who also want to make decisions. Well, and it's grown. It keeps yeah. growing. That's the, yeah, it's, it's very, very odd, but, but that's been, that's sort of been, uh, that's sort of been our thing. It's just like to find some weird little avenue and then learn about it in public. Is sort of like yeah. our deal, right? Black envelope. Oh, it's Gao again. Um, from the Magical Land of Prudane, still. If you had to choose, oh, I think this is a double. I think this is a uh, uh, haiku is. and a regular question. It is. Um, if you had to choose a new Ack Inc. character, what class would they be? Artificer, it's easy. It's easy to choose. Oh, I would still be a wizard. It's just too fun for you, right? Yeah, I was playing um, Kingdoms of Amalur. And Amalur. anytime I play a game, I play as a wizard. No matter what the game is. If it's, not, if it's a game where you have an option, you know, I'm going to play the wizard. And I was like, you know what, this time I'm going to play something different. I'm going to be a rogue. Within like five hours, I had spec'd all sorcery. I was just casting uh, spells. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't take very long. And these magical chakra blades, like... You're a wizard. You're I'm a, a wizard, wizard Harry. Harry. Exactly. So what else you got? I got something for you. Oh, oh. Uh, they, they've left this one in. This is obviously Mike Buland, our Technomancer, who is responsible for large aspects of the experiences you're having at PAX Online. Gao from the Gao, you need to get out of here. Yeah. You need, to, you need a hobby. Will um, there be more Seattle by Night adventures? I love the antics of Tom Holland days. That's me. Jameson King. That's my friend Jerry. Amanda Brooker and Betty Lancaster, especially when paired with storyteller extraordinaire Jason Carl. Indeed. Please, I am at Hunger 4 and I need my fix of hot vampire action. Uh, well, that's, that's the fantasy. I mean, there's no, there's no ink set down or anything like that, but um, people are still telling us about this incredibly silly vampire game we did months ago, which, you know, I, I think ultimately we've learned to 
listen to it when people say they want more stuff. Yeah, I had a good time playing as a vampire. I would yeah. bite more people. Yeah. Johnny from Stagwood Hollow asks, how does the first video game you ever played compare to the last video game you played? Interesting. The very first game, at least the very first game that I can really remember was Zork. Yeah. Um, so a text adventure. Um, and so it's all black screen and then some words. Um, and the very last game that I played is like a, is like, it, 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 I swear to God, it's like a combination of every trend at once. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like a roguelike sort of pseudo JRPG stuff, like, like executed all in pixel art. Like, it's just like the, it's wow. the cherry on top of a trend Sunday. It's called Star Renegades and it's, it's actually pretty cool, but it is, um, it is all the things I just mentioned. So yeah, you have to the, want those. The first game I have a memory of is Pong. I can remember playing that with the dial, you know, the knobs. Yeah. Uh, as far as the last game I played, it was Kingdoms of Amalur. I just, I'm hooked on it. Um, it's too good. It's, it's I love. Still wor- it still works. I mean, yeah. If you can, if you can divorce it from all of the stuff around it, the craziness about people going to jail and embezzling money and all that stuff, like the game that these ill-gotten funds were used to make. <laughs> Obviously, I feel very bad for the people of Rhode Island. Um, but you're. But this saying- game is incredible. If they yeah. just played it, <laughs> <laughs> they could appreciate it. As yeah. I do. Mike from literally also hosting this panel asks, this is a meta joke from for Jerry. Did I ever tell you that I bought a DeLorean a couple of years ago? I ended up selling it after a few months. I really only drove it from time to time. Thanks. Uh, I'll be here all night folks. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna get you something good. Are you ready? Yeah. Just really play the the pointer over it. Find the right one. Don't just hot. Don't just jump in. I feel like heat. <clears throat> no, it's like when you open a pack, like in a digital TCG, it's like, yep. yo, which one am I going to do? It's going to be a good one. Which one's looking right? Here. Uh, Schickler from Horsetown asks, in Penny Arcade, the series, The Muppets, which employees are represented by which Muppet? I see that they, I mean, haven't, they <laughs> haven't given us the easy one because obviously uh, Beaker, right? And Bunce and Honeydew, like we're already handled. They haven't even put us in there. It's like, who do we put in for the rest of them? Dude, Sam the Eagle would be a great Kiko, honestly. Sam the Eagle is Kiko, absolutely. It's the same base. Well, there's some key differences, like the beak. But I mean, in terms yeah, of the vibe, hair, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of them is a human man. Like, but I'm just saying that like the vibe- Oh, you're talking about like, Kiko, yeah. Yeah, the vibe. <laughs> is the same vibe that question wasn't as good as i was hoping well i mean listen maybe, i'm not maybe, saying it's bad schickler from horsetown well maybe schickler was just warming up and there's some supreme cues later let's go to a green envelope are you yeah. ready yeah let's get it get it jerry from also hosting this Ow. panel is someone this, behind the scenes no, doing this this is laura I know it doesn't that- matter what I click on, does it? <sighs> Jerry from also hosting this panel. Yeah, it's completely driven by them. Um, for Mike, uh, I guess theoretically from me for you, uh, what do you get when you cross an elephant and a rhinoceros? Your National Science Foundation grant revoked and demands to attend a number of biological ethics hearings. This is the- That's honestly, a good joke. This is, a, this is great material. My compliments to the chef. Okay, now I am, am I alone in constructing a, a theory that no matter what we click on, we are just fed the next question in an already predetermined set of well, questions. In a rich narrative crafted, no doubt, uh, by Laura from work. This is like when Neo figures out he's in the Matrix. Yeah. It's just like that. Go ahead. Nevermore 
from Maryland asks, Mike or Jerry, do you have any board game suggestions to introduce people to the world of board and tabletop games? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people already play various kinds of card games. They just don't, they just, that's just like where they stop. Yeah. But there's other things that you can do even with the same, even with the same cards. Um, the, a really strong intro, I think, is probably Forbidden Island. What do you think? Yeah, I was going to say um, one of these cooperative games, yes. Forbidden Island, Forbidden Desert. Yeah, you want to start, especially if you're going to get somebody into this stuff, it's definitely a good idea to start with a game where you're all on the same team Yeah, and you're all working toward the same goal so you can learn that stuff together. Um, because uh, the alternative, you don't want to like jump right into the fucking thunderdome right away with something like this like some crazy shit like you know Catan or something like that like you don't that's not what we want let's 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 begin um i i have been more angry at you in ticket to ride i think than i have ever been angry Me? at you yes really well it's because of the i have no recollection i have no recollection of this i i was so mad at you that i could not talk to you if someone uh, asked me if you and I had ever played Ticket to Ride, I would say no. That is so shocking. And when frankly, like you, that uh, remember we had, the, we had the app on the iPad. So we would play oh, it on the airplane. Oh, the app. And then yeah. so you know how we would like play like early on and then I wouldn't talk to you for the next four hours? Yeah. I thought you fell asleep or something. No, no. It's because... You knew that you would hurt me. You knew that placing that train would hurt me very badly. Yeah. And you did it. You still did it. I played a win. And I played, you played a, a You played a hurt. Strike first. Strike hard. No mercy. Sir. Ted from your friendly corner bicycle shop asks, why couldn't the bicycle stand up straight? It has severe structural issues. Ted, you know what? This is... I understand that you have these, these dreams. I don't think that one rises to the level. But, I'm going with a black envelope. I need something. Well, we'll see. We'll see. If it even matters. Eek from Ah asks, I once had a friend uh, who was wonderful to hang out with and very interesting. Listen, I love this story. I'm sure, so far, it's, yeah. I'm sure it's going to be maintained at this level in terms of joy. I'm going to invest um, myself in it. Yeah, invest yourself fully because I think we can safely enter into it um, okay. and it's going to be life affirming. Okay. Um, at some point, I had to cancel a hangout because of a work thing and never rescheduled because my life pretty much fell apart after that. I only tried to reconnect nine months later, tried to explain. She never responded I saw her in a store a while later and she ignored me. That was three years ago. I mourn what we lost, but I respect her decision to end contact. Good. Have you ever watched a friendship simply end and wondered? You're going to have to answer this one. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine what it would feel like to need a person. Yeah. <laughs> To yeah. want another human being. No, I'm just kidding. No. no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that... Um, yes. Can't let him go. I definitely have, but it's like... But also, it's like when it comes to us, it's like, to a certain extent, yeah. I mean, obviously, I would benefit from this person's continued attentions. But I have, uh, I have no illusions about how fucking annoying I am at all. Like... <laughs> Oh, sure. I, if someone... I know. Yeah. I know that I ask a lot of the people around me. I know if that someone I... leaves me. I'm just like, yeah, great. That's not that is, surprised. That is a credit to them and they should be Healthy congratulated move. for it. Yeah. It's like, I am your biggest fan uh, yeah. for pulling that card. Teach sure. me how to get away from this. Yeah. Is it, please help us both. Can out. I come with you? Yeah. Away from me. Schickler. All right, now hold on. Now this is no. the second entry. I've already in, made up my mind. In Schickler's, this is going to be. You hang on there. This is right, the second ahead, entry it. in Schickler's 
Horsetown Chronicles. The last one, kind of a Muppet thing. I don't know. Let's see where let's see where it goes from there. Some fantastic video game ads have existed in magazines and television spots throughout the years. Which ad campaigns do you remember most fondly? Oh man, I have very fond memories of the original Crash Bandicoot ads. The guy dressed up. Oh, in, dressed up in the big Bandicoot suit. Yeah, those bring back fond sort of early '90s memories to me. The one that I remember, the one that I remember the most, and I, honestly, I'm not even sure if they ever actually pulled it off. Maybe they just announced it to get notoriety. But there was, I think it was like Shadow Man, uh, a claim was offering Shadow Man advertising for people's tombstones. Oh, wow. And so it's like, they would, it's like, hey, give over a place on this tombstone for an ad for Shadow Man. And I mean, already it's getting a little bit weird, but the quote, like the quote that really sends it over the top is that they said that it might be particularly attractive um, to poorer people. Oh, who need money to pay for their dead person's funeral and i was just like that yeah wow <laughs> that's you know? incredible that you can disassociate yourself from reality like that yes yeah, sometimes i feel like oh you know I, I, maybe i lack empathy um and i'm not even saying that isn't true but i think that's a wild ass ride yeah absolutely uh hand sandwich hand sandwich hmm. from desperation falls asks Love languages are bows, but nevertheless... <laughs> they're not bows, they're bogus. Oh, they're bogus. But nevertheless, what's yours? Mine's unsolicited food delivery. If I like oh. you, you're getting a lasagna, and I won't hear another word about it. Interesting. You just send people food? I, I feel like that's very... <laughs> I feel like sending someone food is it's actually quite intimate. Yeah. I mean, the most I send, even people that I really love, like yeah. the most is like an Amazon gift card. That's like the apex? Yeah. Because in, in my mind, it's like, well, you could do whatever you want with that. Yeah. It's just, it's like giving them, it's like giving them branded money. I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, I mean, it's less crass than just giving a person $15. Cash. Right. Yeah. It's like, that's weird. But what if I gave you branded money? Yeah. And all I'm doing is I'm giving you possibilities. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's just experiences you haven't had yet. You yep. Know? Um, yeah. My love language is touch. All right. Keep going. Gross. Whoa. Go ahead, man. <laughs> you know what? You, you jump in one. there. You see it. I mean, I know that it's nothing like that. Uh, but Knackbrook uh, from Ox3 asks, do you believe in subliminal messaging? What about super liminal or just liminal? <laughs> Hyperliminal? X liminal? Do you think you would notice if a question changed while it was still inside the envelope in a year of all digital packs? I don't, I'm starting to feel like I am observing myself from a well, third now person I'm like watching perspective. It. Now I'm weirded out. It didn't change. Not yet. We're about to be we're about to be manipulated, big time. Yeah, I mean this is what we've been doing, but you mean more than usual. No, hold on. Did you see how now all the envelopes are different? There's no Paxmans out there at all. They're always changing. Nick from Louisville asks, "Thank you for for writing it out. I appreciate Louisville. it. I almost certainly would have called the place here from Louisville." Uh, dear Mark and Jer. What are your IRL dump stats? If you could reallocate points, would you? I mean, I think that I have a low con, but I, I, I do have asthma. I don't know if asthma in this case counts as like a, uh, like a, uh, like a debuff. I think if your con is pretty high. Yeah, maybe. Honestly. It, unless I have to move or do anything, and then it's See, like I think dexterity is your dump stat. Oh, well, that's, that's guaranteed. Do you remember when I, remember we opened up that, um, that Game, Game Boy? Boy Advance and we tried to install that afterburner screen? And Hands even though, just <laughs> like crazy. But even though, like, but you didn't want to do it because the, you didn't want to ruin your Game Boy. Yeah. 
right? Even though you have incredibly fine motor control. Oh, absolutely. Being a lifelong artist. But then you let me do it and it goes like this. There's solder everywhere in there. I just closed it up. Yeah. Yeah, it was really shameful. I would say my dump stat is strength. Yeah? I'm just super weak. <laughs> yeah. Um, physically, morally. Yeah, ethically. Ethically. <laughs> See? Lots of white envelopes now. <sighs> yeah. All right. You know, maybe it's okay. Maybe, it's, maybe we're not being manipulated 24-7. Russian oh, spy from no. FBI working from home due to COVID asks. See, but the other one had the Russian name. Yeah. What games which have been touted as must play and best buy have you skipped and why? Which not so recently released games do you think you could come back to and finally pick up or continue and finish still? Well, you're literally engaged in the re-reckoning right now. Yeah, I'm going back to a game that came out in 2012 that they just re-released. Exactly. I'm having a great time. Must play. Man. Well, I mean, neither of us played um, Last of Us 2. That's true. That's true. Basically, we decided with, with that is that um, we were redlined on tension, fear, and anguish. Yeah, and enough. That, and we didn't actually have to... We didn't have to simulate it in uh, HD with the yeah. HDR lighting and the blood effects. Green envelope. Hey, it's John, a uh, coffee robot from Norwich, UK asks, there was a big trend in people tidying their houses and clearing out their junk this year due to lockdown. But what's co what completely useless thing you own that you'll never ever get rid of, not in a million years? It's a cool question. I was just going to say, I mean, I wish that that, had, that junk clearing thing had happened here. We never got around to that. No, we should have. It's a great idea. I mean, it's not, I mean, because we're actually at home, right? Yeah. Uh, we could, there's all kinds of things we can just reach over. There's all kinds of technically useless things all around. I have a prized possession. This is my Pac-Man glass. Wait, dude, that, that's just, that's been there forever. Yeah, I mean, this is... An original, and I just glass I use it for all kinds of stuff. Well, I mean, I feel like it's very appropriate. I mean, obviously, I'll say a tiny man bird <laughs> who wants to fight. He wants to fight. Um, I, I mean, on stage, even though it would be deeply appropriate, I've never had the opportunity uh, to display it. But this desk ornament. Yeah. I mean, is it useful in the classic sense? No, it's no. not even on my desk. I literally had to reach up to a shelf and get it. Um, but it's not going anywhere. You earned that. I did. God damn it. I hustled daily, and, and that was the result. Oh, man. I got you. Go ahead. Sad anime protagonist from some, like, mountain town asks, my life is super hard and I have many reasons for being depressed and or socially stunted, but the fandom thinks I'm ungrateful for the giant robots my dad forces me to pilot and should just stop being depressed. Anyway, I need help. I really need help, but also uh, a question, I guess. How can you tell if your crush is actually a godlike being? Now, um, I feel very strongly that this refers to an actual anime. Almost certainly. Um, I, I don't, don't watch. Which, I didn't watch that. I don't know which it's not one. Appleseed, and it's not Bubblegum Crisis. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think it's. I mean, it's not. It's not, obviously it's not Gundam Unicorn, which is like, no. the only one that I would know about. Maybe it's an Evangelion thing. I don't know. John uh, Durgelheim from the most real of places. It's asked, not even. It's not even a real name. Yeah, it is. So, Durgelheim. Mm. Has Penny Arcade ever made a strip that no one has understood? Similar to Farside's Cow Tools. What is Farside's Cow Tools? Well, here, let's... We have an incredible opportunity here. Cow Tools. Hmm. 
Can you parse this in any way? Oh, is, is one of them, is like an utter with like one? <laughs> I'm really struggling, man. Can you parse that strip at all? I, I really don't know. I'm going to have to invest. I mean, it has its own Wikipedia article here that I'm going to obviously need. The cartoon was intended to be an exercise in silliness. Well, well Agreed. Never met a cow who could make tools. I felt sure that if I did, they, the tools, would lack something in sophistication and resemble the sorry specimens shown in this cartoon. I regret that my fondness for cows, <laughs> combined with an overactive imagination, may have carried me beyond what is comprehensible to the average far side reader. God, I just But dude, that's but we've seen that before. Like... It's like how made tools they wouldn't be very good but can you imagine like like the modern version of this it'd be like because of course he'd be like on insta right and then he'd like put up it's like an all black background text with some white text on it like an apology for apology how how just completely inconceivable i mean do we have any that no one no one i don't look i don't think that we have any that no one has understood but i think that we excel at making strips that half of the people understand yes and the other half don't and yes. then occasionally they swap they swap back and forth that that half is always changing oh uh -oh. horrible goose from charming village asks, watch out yeah check this honker he's gonna get you yeah he's on his way techno oh this is one that's left in here no here i but we should say how do you feel about garbage collection a garbage collection mechanism being added to the ISO C++ standard specification. This is literally the types of, I've, I've had conversations like this with him. Uh-oh. All right, now hold it's on. your boy. Well, I was just going to say, now this is, this is, I mean, functionally speaking, this is the Horsetown Chronicles trilogy. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be something here where, are, are we going to ramp up? Like, is this where the sophistication kind of takes it to the next level? I mean, I already read it, so. Oh, uh, how, how was it? It's good. It's a good really? question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead, well, they, read it. They, they, they tuned it up. Did you ever wind up educating your children in the old ways of video games? Do you keep any older consoles hooked up in your homes? Um, well, yeah, it's very, very easy to have at least Ursa, like, you know, pretend versions of old consoles now. They'll sell you one that has all the games in it. And it yeah. just looks like the old system, but is smaller somehow. Um, no, I have actually been messing around with the present that you gave me, Michael. Oh, hey, ho, I ho, you ho. That. Yes, uh, that is the Evercade. It's sort of like a little, almost like a little, uh, you know, emulation yeah. machine. But it has like an HDI out, and then it has cartridges that are basically sort of like brand cartridges that have like the must-play games from certain uh, eras, yeah. which is which is kind of neat. And you I have tried like to the Interplay one or the Tecmo one, right? Exactly, exactly. And I, I like to, I like to uh, make sure that the youth uh, sort of know the arc anyway. Yeah, I mean, they've been around old games all the time. We've had arcade machines in the house. Well, yeah, and, the games, hooked and, up. and the games that were really popular, certainly when they were younger, are sort of all, like the aesthetic is all classic aesthetics from when we were growing up. Like, it's actually something yeah. that weirdly we kind of share with them. Arthup from some future time when PAX can be in person again asks, is the pattern on Tycho's traditional shirt based on anything? More importantly, when can we expect a shirt with that simple, clearly non-trademark violating design <laughs> to show up for sale in the PA store? Nothing against the Gabe logo or whatever Namco calls it these days, but some of us have a need for a blue on blue Tycho shirt in our lives. Is that true? I mean, it was just a split decision when I drew the first cartoon. Well, yeah, because you had to do it. Like, that was the last thing you were thinking about, I assume. Yeah, I never thought about them really reappearing. I just drew a shirt. And now you've literally had to draw it for 22 for 20 years. For year, 22 years, yeah. Uh, I don't know yeah. if we'll sell it. I don't I mean, know. We, we <laughs> I have had that blue long sleeve shirt. We have, we, we have had that conversation, certainly in the past. I think that we, ultimately we decided that very, very few people are interested in that. 
Um, and, you, and you'd have to do it completely custom end to end. Yeah. Because you'd want to do it with actual panels, right? Yeah. Well, the designers now, would want to do it right. Oh, exactly right. Now, a mask with the stripes, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Fix uh, from Nominal Orbit Trajectory asks, Dearest Jerry, seeing uh, as Michael has kitted himself out as Mike Racecar uh, during tech quarantines, locks downs, um, have you done any work on your SCA kit and caboodle? No. Um, I haven't done it, but it, it's like I went to a SCA event, one, and yeah. I really, really enjoyed it, but I've never had, I've never had a necessity to get out those, um, the, the garb of an Italian merchant again. It's just never. It's just hanging in the closet still? No, it's literally still in the trunk. I just, I haven't, I have not needed wow. a brocade vest uh, for years. Schickler from Horsetown. The, hold, hang on, the quadrilogy? Now he's pushing it. Wow. Okay. Schickler from Horsetown asks, for the inaugural season of the Penny Arcade Wrestling Federation, what song will be played when each of you enters the ring? Oh, man. Fast car. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of bring it down a little bit. Yeah, and everybody's kind of crying by the end of it, and you know we're all sharing <laughs> hankies. No, it's got to be Soft Cell's Tainted Love. Bum, bum. Right? That one yeah. was like with the Tainted Love. Okay. Something wrong with the love. Adge Corp. Uh, indeed. From C Team Twitch chat asks, what do you call cheese that isn't yours? Well, the dad answer to this is nacho cheese. Yes, but of course. Someone else's cheese. That's well, yeah, I mean that's true. That's fine. Cookie Mom uh, from Cookie Brigade Quarantine Zone asks, fuck just doesn't seem to be cutting it as a swear to express my dismay at a situation anymore. Do you have any suggestions for stronger swears to use? I like yeah. to say shits lately. Like plural? plural? Yeah. Shits. <laughs> it's like good. When, yeah, when one shit won't do. Yeah. yeah. Well, the issue with fuck, I mean, eventually, I mean, maybe sometime next year, fuck will imagine that that fuck as a, uh, as its currency it's going to diminish with the use. And mm. I think that we've just had a lot of opportunities to use it right now. Yeah. And it's, it's super bar just needs to refill in the meantime, shits works great. I am especially fond of, and I think that depending on the, the enunciation, I think horse shit is doing a lot of work for me right now. Yeah. Maxwellian demonus. Damonus from the surrounding Aether asks if one were to posit the nature of possibility and the worlds beyond the principles and subjects of interest and fancy if a realm could be reborn or fade bringing blood and storm its shadows coalescing into a grassy field akin to heaven in all the possibilities what would your final fantasy no what would be your final fantasy what would be your final fantasy oh interesting and then right down at the end they're like hey my final fantasy is 14 <laughs> Uh, a realm reborn uh is that the opening to a realm reborn uh my you just read my an advertisement or i i think so i was just gonna yeah maxwellian demonis like aka square, square ENX. pr yeah um no uh, my the my final fantasy the one that actually really like endures the most for me is and, and i don't think that it's most people's like favorite probably but, not but 10 is actually my final fantasy for sure Oh yeah. Like for me, all the, all the dad stuff. Um, there's just some really big whack out ideas. And obviously um, the idea that there's like somebody's special job it is to communicate these souls after. And it's like, if we don't respect these souls and all this bad shit happens. Like there's just, there's just a lot about it. And the aesthetic was killer too. Yeah. I was going to say 10 too, because for me, that was the one that got no, no, carried. <clears throat> no, you don't mean 10 too. No, no, you not mean, ten two, ten yeah. also. Yes, really. Oh, yeah. 
that's the one that got Kara into gaming and we, we sort of played together and then she ended up taking over. Well, so she took a, her handle from it. That was right? a fun one. Yeah. That she got Yuna. That's been her handle forever. Right. All right. Angus Mac, Angus MacDonald from Canada asks, uh, what PAX online panel event are you personally most excited for? Um, My obviously, God. Oh man. I mean, you don't even understand, dude. Like, I bet he's got some cool ideas. I guarantee that he does. I mean, I grew up playing his shit. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. It is just the weirdest thing. Like, it's just like a name. I didn't even. I couldn't even picture it. I just knew that this was a cool person. Yeah, you just uh, see it on the books. Exactly. I just grew up with this entity that gave me these really useful ideas. Um, but obviously, we're overjoyed uh, to have a Strix Beastinger return. Uh, with us on the uh, Acquisitions Incorporated stage, for sure. The Signs from all over the Philadelphia Convention Center asks... <laughs> is that is it Wash? Please? Man, that's really odd. Why would they make the faces... I mean, I guess I'm not going to forget this. Oh, scroll down. Oh. Oh. Do not yeah. touch. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. There's okay. a I'm disturbed by the pointing hand there. And I, it might be it might be true for a while. Now uh, Cohen Leonard, interesting, uh from Hallelujah. Oh, I get it. Um asks the Portuguese word uh saudade, saudade maybe, describes a feeling of longing, melancholy or nostalgia that is supposedly characteristic of the Portuguese or Brazilian temperament. <laughs> I'm not Brazilian or Portuguese, but I feel that. I have a question. I just wanted to share. Saudade. I'm into it. Mr. Ripe, pronounced ripe. Hey. No, Rip E. Oh. From outside the WSCC, waiting for the doors to open, asks... We can't do the pork fry knuckle crack online. So how about another old tradition? Jerry, can you sing us a shanty? Let's see. I will. I bet he can. There we go. Yeah. No, oh, I was just going to say, so there's apparently a word there in Portuguese about a specific type of rich sadness. Um, and then it just reminded me, because we got into racing recently, it reminded me of, of Sisu, which is a Finnish word that you should look up because its definition is beyond my ability to calculate it. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Well, we can do both things. Um, I mean, we might not be able to hear the strangely wet sound of everyone cracking the knuckles at once, but I will call it out and then you can do this into your microphone, right? Me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So three, two, one, crack. It's you know, crack on one and don't hit the microphone, but All don't, right. right. But don't, we're not cracking on one. It isn't three, two, and then do it. It's like three, two, one. And then in the space where a number would be just let's after just, it. Let's just do it. Okay. You ready? Three, two, one. No, it was yucky. It was, it was still yucky. Even if it's one person. Yeah. The sound is, is real. Um, Some wet knuckles. Gosh, I mean, in terms of... Um, sing a shanty. I mean, I have sing to... Me, sing me a song. Oh, of, 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 I, I can sing you a song of a loud that has gone, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, this is such a strange... Just out here in space, like there's not a lot of oxygen, yeah. you know? Do your best. All right. Sing me a song of a lad that has gone. Say, could that lad be I? Mary of soul, he sailed on a day over the sea to sky. Mo was astern, rum on the port, high on the starboard bow. Glory of life shone in his soul. Where is that glory now? Yeah, okay. Yeah, still works. Cool I trick. Remembered, I remembered the words. Oh, it's a technomancer. Oh, answer. does P equal NPY? I'm going to send him a text about that later. It might. I don't know. Select answer from Q&A asks, where question equals, what has never been easier? 
Oh, uh, I assume that something never being easier is related to D and D Beyond. That's my guess. Oh, that's my guess. Well, the math has never been easier. And, oh, I was just gonna say. Well, no. And now that you can, now that you can click the dice. I can click the dice. It really has never been easier. Right. What do you got? Oh, oh okay. My God. Hold on. The quintology. That's it's not like, a real word. Now it's time to invert some of the concepts. Now it's time to deconstruct, really investigate, right? You are now in charge of Tiger Electronics. What intellectual property do you turn into your next handheld LCD game since Hasbro owns both Tiger Electronics and Wizards of the Coast? When do we get the Acquisitions Incorporated handheld LCD game? Oh. There's, there's like two frames of animation yeah. for each of us. It's like a game. It's like a game and watch type thing. Um, is Tiger God. Electronics still around? Are they making stuff? Yeah, yeah. They 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 make they 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 make little really? digital toys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, man, I, honestly, now I'm just thinking about what it'd be like to make a like a cooperative, like a payday type thing, but yeah. in Waterdeep with wizards, clerics warriors and rogues on like, a tiny lcd screen well yeah i mean uh, now i'm not worried about the lcd anymore i that that might that concept might not 100 percent work but uh if anyone ever wants to make a fantasy heist game uh with a proven ip um uh, you know get old me i think you could do something where there's like uh dubs coming down and jim has like a wand he's got to zap him He's got to get him? Yeah. He's got to hurt him somehow? He only had a couple frames of animation. He's got to hurt birds. Um, John, Coffee Robot from Norwich, UK, asks, to make the week feel more like PAX, I've learned how to make a cheese steak wit whiz, of course. Uh, or whiz wit, I think. Um, are either of you doing any PAX traditions at home that you'd normally be doing in a far off city. That's yes, funny. I mean, we, we wrote a comic strip about this very thing. Today. Yes, yes. Uh, it will be available uh, on the Monday during PAX as an experience. Uh, you will see those things. But uh, in the same way that like, um, you know, Scrooge is exhorted to keep Christmas in uh, his heart all the year. Like I have been preparing um, by just stewing in an anxiety that is so real, uh, I, can, I feel like I could reach out, grab, and break it. Yeah, I tried uh, just crying until there were no more tears. Yeah, um, just wring them out. Yeah, and I was like, ha, ah, feels like I'm there. Yeah. Hidden Trader from USA asked, Shit, will there be a new C-team? or other frequent D and D AI stream. I'm just starting. I'm just starting now at the beginning and love. Oh. Sad to hear it's ending. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is currently, um, this is currently the final season of the C team. That being said, all good um, things end. Indeed. Indeed. And that's ultimately, you can only reset those things so much. If you ultimately, you want to try to tell a story that has, at least the potential for authentic ramifications. And stream games have certain dynamics that um, make the real growth arcs difficult. But um, those characters, uh, are, I'm sure that we'll see those characters again, for sure. Adam, wow. Uh, I, From I, Oakland, I, California yeah. asks, what's something you miss about classic PAX and something you enjoy about PAX Online? Oh, That's man. a good question. Well, PAX, for me, PAX tends to be about food. Yes. Um, it's about going to different places and, like, having my, my specific place. Like, at PAX South, is there a place that you go every time? Yeah. I don't know the names of any of the places. Well, no, I just you just know the location. I know what to order. Yeah. yeah. You know the location that it's at, right? Yeah. That was just going to say, the thing I miss about classic PAX is PAX South. Yeah. Margaritas. The river walk. No, there's 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 hot shit down there for sure. My uh, there's two my, I have two places for the Pack South one. It's Tacos y Salsa, which is a pr pretty straightforward a name as yeah. uh, taco shops go, and uh, Henry's Puffy Tacos, which sounds bad but is good. And uh, those are those are like my A plus 
go to every time in Melbourne, Melbourne, I guess they say. Uh, it's all, it's Mugen Ramen. It's right there in a laneway downtown. Um, but yeah, every one of these zones, typically, typically we have a steak. Like I don't really eat steaks generally, but that's right. something that we have done at PAX East. Right. Yeah. I think as far as something I enjoy about PAX online, I mean, I'm literally in my pajamas below this shirt. Yeah. No hard pants. That's the rule now. But the other thing is you can't miss for PAX unplugged. You can't miss the market. You can, if you, if you don't want to get sick, if you don't want to get the poops. What? Did you get sick at the market? I get the poops. What, Bad. Did, what, what did you eat? A Philly cheesesteak. You got it from the market? Like, yes. Really? I've also had good ones. I've had good experiences there, but I did, I did one time get a whoo. No, man. Alyssa and I also found a place that is, that makes poutine, but it's like a poutine. Imagine poutine is a genre instead of like one thing. It was kick ass. Laura from work asks, <laughs> is this a question? No. I don't think so. Not in the uh -huh. classic sense. Uh, James A. Caster from Kettering. No, it's not. Uh, Papa Dom's are bread. Oh, I see. This is, this is connected to uh, the off-menu podcast. Uh, also, your favorite starter, main course, side dish, drink, and dessert. What is this um, about? Oh, this, there's a there's a, a comedian who also has but he's a British man. I don't know. Okay. Beyond that, um, you know, we like um, mozzarella sticks to start, chicken saute to start, um, chicken strips and fries for main course. Main course uh, filet mignon. Uh, side dish would be more mozzarella sticks. Side dish cream spinach. Drink Sprite and a milkshake. Uh, drink um, probably uh, Fish Our Friends uh, from Aslan. Dessert, fresh chocolate chip cookies and milk. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, like at the Heinz Center? Yeah. Yeah. Or just, you know, Pillsbury out of your oven. Yeah. For me, in terms of a dessert, um, I myself... Uh, impartial to strawberry rhubarb pie. Yeah. It's Look really how different we are. Yeah. But we're still we're friends, you know? We're both special. You know what? It's like we can still meet in the middle. Opposites attract. It ain't friction. It's just a natural fact. Two Tycho <laughs> Bruhe of the Woolross clan from <laughs> Small Size Network Audio System, not to be confused with Network Access Server, asks... Hello, Tycho. I've heard you are good at these kinds of problems, and I ask for your help. I'm trying to become a rapper, but the error message says I can't use Lil Nas because it's already in use. Other suggested names are Big Ending. Yeah, Raid. Raid. Left to right, right to forget, end of file, digital Nas. It's already taken. Terms of service. Certificate authority. No, Which I, one should I, I pick, or maybe I should go with something else. I, I think Raid. Out of that group, I think Raid is great, but then the those, rest. Of, yeah. But then the rest are just excellent album names, or tracks. Yeah. Raid's the the rapper name. Yeah, out of this, out of this uh, bunch for sure. Raid or Ray. Grant from Columbus asks, Mink the Mercilisks and <laughs> sure Jerka Herka. In recent years, there seems to be more instances of accidental continuity in the comic where you'll make a comic that's intended to be a one-off, but then you end up returning to it the next strip. And even the strip after, a la Alpha Centauri or Blue Mountain E-Cards. Oh, I just, I, I just, that was fucking nuts. But I actually just went back and read all the Alpha Centauri stuff again. Is there a reason for this? Not that I'm complaining since these are some of my favorite strips. Has your conception of what the comics should be no. changed over the years? Not really. I think that basically, I think that what has happened is that, especially in, you know, in those particular cases, it's just too dumb. Yeah. Like we just can't, like once we get our teeth into it, we just got to shake it. Yeah. And the dumber it is, if it's, if it's so dumb that it makes us laugh where we're like, God, you know, what we could do is you could keep going with this joke. And then we, and then we'll just automatically write the second one. Sometimes yeah. it's, it's because it's so it comes so easily. 
Yeah, that's the main was, thing. It's like once we've popped the top, I mean, this is this phenomenon holds true in other contexts as well. Yeah. Essentially, if once we've popped, stopping is difficult, if not impossible. So if we're still laughing at a joke, we're just going to make more. Yeah, we just we just hang on to it. Well, uh, gathered friends, uh, thank you so much uh, for rolling through the second Q and A uh, here of Pax Online. Thank you so much for showing it up. Obviously. Uh, lots more to come. We'll see you. Bye, everybody.